It's Tuesday the 18th of May. Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host Mark Anthony and we will get to those news headlines in just a second but first let us meander through the meaningless world of celebrity and see which of the pampered and the preening is celebrating a birthday today. Uh, it's actually many happy returns to comedian and actress Tina Fey, uh, to singer Toya Wilcox whose poster once adorned my teenage bedroom wall right alongside Debbie Harry who to be honest I preferred, um, to World Cup winning footballer Nobby Styles. And many happy returns also to film director Frank Capra. Uh, no Christmas is complete without a rewatching of Capra's It's a Wonderful Life. So happy birthday, Mr. Capra and Attaboy Clarence. If you know, you know. Uh, happy birthday also to our mate and technology guru, uh, Dale Hawkins, over at Plant Force, and to drink and drugs testing expert Matt Taylor of ITS Test Kits, who, like Dale, has been a guest on our show a few times now. Uh, as you can see, our baseball cap world journey, uh, part of the Round the World in a Dozen Hats tour, today makes landfall in China. It's a place I've never visited. I've come close a few times, but never got there but one day, maybe. But until then, I'll just have to content myself with this fine specimen supplied to me by our friends over at Lugong Direct UK. We'll be right back with the real show in just a second. If you enjoyed this show, please consider supporting us. Go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash demolition news. So a weird thing happened yesterday. Uh, news reached us that JCB had made another step along the road to hydrogen power. Now, we'd already covered the fact that the company had developed a hydrogen fueled excavator um, in prototype form, at least. So the fact that the British manufacturer was still dabbling with hydrogen really came as no great surprise. What marked this as weird, however, was that A, we first heard about it in the Telegraph newspaper, that B, it then appeared in the car sector magazine, Autocar, and then C, that the latest development is apparently aimed at more than just the construction equipment sector. Um, if you look in the description for today's um, show, you will see a link to the Autocar article. But in essence, it says JCB's hydrogen engine is naturally aimed at its own off-highway applications. But after successful initial trials in excavators, the company's engineers believe they have a technology that can be successfully applied in a much wider range of vehicles. JCB's chairman, Lord Bamford, set up a specialist hydrogen engine research team at the company's R&D centre last year after growing increasingly concerned about the impending loss of piston engine expertise. Perhaps most telling of all in the story uh, is a quote from Lord Bamford, who says, we're not arguing for diesel anymore. That horse has bolted. Zero carbon emissions must be the target, but we don't believe that batteries and fuel cells are the only answer. Now, this is a subject um, that we'll be revisiting in a special live show, and I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But imagine that. JCB, a name synonymous with construction equipment, could yet find itself at the very forefront of hydrogen-powered vehicle development. Could JCB be the next Tesla? Personally, I'd love to see it. Um, I'm scheduled to visit the JCB World Headquarters in just over a week's time. Uh, hopefully, I can tell you a little bit more after that. Now, you might recall that back in March, Chancellor Rishi Sunak announced the creation of eight new freeports here in England. Sunak's vision is designed to incentivise investment and job creation through a string of benefits, including favourable customers' duties, uh, simplified planning and tax breaks, such as the suspension of VAT, business rates relief and tariff duties. Those benefits could be some time off, but the construction industry is already seeing an uptick in act activity as a result of this announcement. Now, the biggest of these freeports is scheduled to be in Teesside. Now, I have a daily show to produce and getting to Teesside and back in a day, while not impossible, is not exactly ideal. And besides, the outside world is just a little bit peoply for my liking. Um, thankfully, I know a man who has his finger on the industry pulse and who gave up a part of his weekend to stand in the pouring rain with local mayor Ben Houchen to find out more about this massive undertaking and just as importantly, some of the technology being used to deliver the project. Now, that man is Peter Haddock, my Construction Collective co-founder and regular co-presenter, and I think he's probably in the chat as we speak. Uh, Peter has produced a new film from the Teesside pre, uh, Freeport, where he was looking at Volvo excavators utilising Leica Geosystems technology. You'll find a link to the full-length film in our show notes for today. 
But before you head off and, and go and look at something far more interesting like Peter's film, let's take a, a very quick sneak preview. Fantastic, and I'm pleased to be able to get up in the morning and get right back on site, because you're absolutely right, this is the biggest brownfield site in Western Europe, 4,500 acres, we're going to be moving huge amounts of soil, building all sorts of fantastic factories, creating new jobs, and it's great to have some really good, big, innovative technology delivered to the site so we can go on with that. Now, as I mentioned yes, uh, previously, uh, Peter will be joining me tomorrow to look at yet more technology. Uh, together, we are hosting a show called Where Are the Disruptors, in which we will be discussing where the Tesla of the plant world might just come from. We're going to be joined by two very special guests who, in addition to answering our questions, will be able to answer yours too. Uh, the show will be broadcast at 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, uh, both here on Facebook and also on the Diggers and Dozers YouTube channel. Join us if you can and get your questions ready because this one planet. Uh, uh, promises to be a good one. The harbour town of New Haven in East Sussex is set to get a number of new houses as part of a project for client Lewis uh, District Council. Sunning Hill Construction is thought to be in contention for the new build portion of the, of the works that will create 20 new homes, uh, a mix of houses and apartments, at a site on South Road. But first, that site will require the attention of a competent and suitably qualified demolition contractor. Perhaps ideally one that fancies a day or two by the seaside. You can find out more about this project lead and many more just like it over at buildersconference.co.uk. Now, that's just about it for today's show. But before I sign off, I just wanted to throw this one out there. I reported this morning uh, that a company has been fined £600 over an accident in which a worker sustained a fractured ankle and a heel. You can see the article over at demolitionnews.com. It's probably still our lead story for today. Now, my first reaction, I've got to admit, was that £600 seemed like a, a pretty paltry sum for an accident that left an operative temporarily unable to work. But the more I think about it, the more I am troubled by the outcome of this. According to the Health and Safety Executive report uh, during the prosecution, the, the company in question had produced the risk assessments and method statements uh, for the job that included the use of hand tools and sledgehammers. But the operatives on site took it, up, took it upon themselves to simply push a, an external wall over. One of the workers was struck at shoulder height by falling debris and fell to the ground uh, with the material falling on top of him. As I say, he sustained injuries to his shoulder and a fractured heel and a fractured ankle as well. Now, I feel for the guy. I really do. I'm sure that hurt like hell. And I, and I also realise that companies have a duty of care for their employees. But how are you supposed to have a duty of care for individuals that suddenly decide to divert from the agreed plan and do something stupid instead? Now, as I said, the fine was only £600, and maybe that reflected the fact that this was more the fault of the operatives than of the company in question. But that company still has a black mark against its name. Now, while I'm all for protecting employees, that just doesn't seem fair to me. Um, but make up your own mind. As I say, lead story on demolitionnews.com this morning. Enough of this old tosh. Uh, I have places to be and people to see. Neither of those statements is true. Uh, I'll be sat here <laughs> for the rest of the day, actually, mainly talking to myself and beating the keyboard. But I will be back here, uh, same time, same place on the morrow. Uh, and don't forget, we'll also be back for uh, the Where Are the Disruptors show tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Join us if you can. But until then, have a great day. Stay safe. Look after yourself, your family, your friends and your colleagues. And I will see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching.